Hello there, and welcome to another episode of uh, Gamer Guild video, or whatever these are. Uh, today I have the one and only Dallas with me, as he is uh, already in just, I feel like, continuously painting, uh, working on some awesome stuff. And we're going to get to talk a little bit about The Worthy, uh, which had its debut, I guess, a couple months ago now at this point. Uh, oh, like it was yesterday. Oh man, the some parts of it absolutely feel uh, not too long ago, and other parts of it are just uh, making me so excited for the next one. Honestly, after uh, our conversation at Adepticon and stuff. I mean, I'm ready for the next one. Let's do it right now. Let me call uh, Hank. Hank, Adepticon <laughs> 2023 Part Two. I'm on my way. Uh, you know what? I feel like that would give Hank and uh, Mike and them a slight heart attack, but uh, I bet they could put something together. Yeah, they're very much. Yeah, they're ready to roll. They're ready to roll. Absolutely. Uh, so I guess my first uh, kind of question about Adepticon and stuff is uh, that I know of. This was the first uh, big convention that you've been able to kind of go to with AMG and all of that and see literally hundreds of these models that you have helped uh, bring to life and being played with on the tabletop, telling their stories over that weekend. What was that like for you? Uh, I mean, yeah, right. It's like, it's, uh, we've, we've, the history of AMG, right. You have that 2019 we started and we, you know, bringing the worthy to it right was that that was in the plans from the very beginning it, mm -hmm. it was one of the very first conversations we had it's just like we wanted a painting competition we love painting competitions we love the celebration and the pomp and circumstance around it um and immediately you know the world went into lockdown so we haven't had that opportunity to bring the worthy or even just um go to a big convention like you said to see everybody playing so um it was very very cool walking in that first day um because we didn't go to the Adepticon year before as AMG, as my day went. So walking in and seeing the hall and seeing all the tables and and then the the first day when the doors opened and everybody was there to play and come put their entries in the worthy case. Like it's it's always a very cool moment because like as much as, as much as, uh, just as much as you love it, right? You love uh, the game and gaming in general and, uh, miniatures and Marvel miniatures and Star Wars miniatures and all the stuff like like we do just we do as well right and mm -hmm. um, we talk a lot about how like you know we're always chomping at the bit to get that new thing that we're working on in the hands of people I mean there's times we were concepting something today so we're talking like something like you're not going to see for what 18 months yeah, And we were concepting it today. One of the first things that came out of my mouth whenever I saw it was just like, I can't wait for people to see this. I can't wait for people to be able to share in this with us, right? Mm -hmm. Because for me and all of us here at AMG, miniatures and miniatures hobbies is very communal. Even painting miniatures, like it can be a very solitary time where you get to be zen with yourself and kind of get lost in your own artistic, creative endeavors. But also for me, it's also very much a communal thing. I love painting with people. I love painting jams. I love hanging out, sharing ideas, concepts, processes, philosophies, and all that stuff, and educating people. Love educating people. So, like, the communal part of it is so deeply ingrained with us at AMG. Like, we're just as excited for you to see it as you are to see it, too. So, mm -hmm. so walking in that first day and seeing what happened, it was it was magic. You know, awesome. I'm just going to talk. You can't just. You, no. Like, and like, I'm, I'm here I, I for it. I will ramble. I will I, ramble. I, I love the rambling. I love you guys being able to just uh, kind of get into your <laughs> element and uh, share what's uh, what's on your your mind and stuff, honestly. Uh, I mean, did you, like when you walked in, like, I mean, from I'm going to flip the script on you. Like, yeah, you, you're, you're, ne you're never ready for me. Um, when you walked in and you saw those big banners, right? Like, it's just like, it's just like, yes, this is, this is what we're here for. And it's in the energy of the people, the energy of, of, of the community, when you get to sit at that table and you, um, I, I love setting down and bringing, I, I really wish I would have brought, uh, characters to play with, mm -hmm. 
um, I just didn't get the opportunity this year. I just didn't have room in my bag and all that. But like sitting down at that table was such a wonderful moment when you uh, have all like, especially something where somewhere like Adepticon, we have uh, somebody like Hank and his spray team who's painted tons and tons and tons of terrain, just a beautiful standards. And you plop down with your, your painted miniatures and I pop down with my painted miniatures and I get to go, oh my gosh. Like, holy cow, look at that Thanos you painted, Nate. And you're like, oh, thanks, man. Like, holy cow, look at that Beta Ray Bill you painted. I'm like, actually, I painted two because, you know, I never know which one I want to play with because I painted one for each. You know, I painted one for this army and one for this squad. Like, uh, mm -hmm. and you're like, what? You're crazy. And I'm like, I know I can't stop painting stuff. And then I'm like, let's play a game. And I'm like, this is totally be covered. And you're like, yeah. And then we fight and I throw something at you and you throw something at me and we win. Like, like that. Oh, it's just that that's the excitement and the joy, right? Absolutely. No, it's uh it's getting down. I would love next year if you bring some models to uh to be one of those uh people you get to roll some dice with if uh that gets to happen. I mean, I'm not competitive. I don't play a tight game. We've all seen on stream. I'm not I don't I don't play tight games. Man, you don't have to be playing a tight game, you just have to be playing a fun game. I always play the fun game. I'm a I'm a I'm a very I'm a very I it's funny because like I I as an even as as a narrative player I I know this I know we're talking about supposed to be talking about the worthy but now we're all over the <laughs> place because why not like I love um I love like really tight rules like MCP mm -hmm. because it lets me be in the narrative more than worrying about how things interact and going back to you know rule books and stuff and trying to figure it out with my opponent so I love a good tight system but then I like to play loose with, loose within that system so I can just have fun tell a good story like i mean you saw what was it um a couple weeks ago or last month me and josh played and i made him totally re-roll his dice because i it just wasn't a fun story i was just mm -hmm. like no it's not a fun story just re-roll those dice and then it just he just blew it out like he went from all fails to just nothing but crits and just and i was just like way cooler right like that was like that was like a way cooler moment so this is that's the kind of game you get to expect from me I'm all for it. And if it's anything like the uh, the storytelling that I know you even bring to to the roster build, because I know a while back we had uh, Josh join you for a crazy Dark Dimension criminal syndicate team up for an interdimensional heist kind of a thing. Uh, like you're you're gonna have fun with that on the table at the end of the day. Uh, which which one was that? Which one was that? The was that the one where? Oh, was that the one where me and shit converted all of our characters and like did like where I did? Did, did you see that where like I I converted a Star Lord to be wearing like an apocalypse cape, apocalypse lowercase apocalypse like in a yeah uh, post apocalyptic kind of and he and and I gave Star Lord the uh, the Infinity Gauntlet and and like i just converted it all up and like told my own little story like we did that like a couple of years ago that was a long time ago we did a really cool narrative thing i have a whole squad of like 12 a 12 character roster all painted in a completely different style for that for, for that, that specific thing that's awesome yeah yeah all right we well i'm gonna doing, i'm gonna bring us back on track a little bit okay you get you you gotta control the boat i'm not a just a, a little bit at least uh, so obviously, uh, we mentioned it already, the Worthy kind of got put off because it was something that you guys had wanted yeah. to do from the get-go. Yep. Global pandemic happens, is what it is. So it was a long time coming. As a whole, was it worth it for you, that additional weight? Uh, I mean, it was I mean, it was absolutely worth it. Um, you know, um, I'm I'm very much a go with the flow kind of person. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's it, it I always every year is like, is this the year? Can we do this? Um, and every year wasn't the right time. And like, and and we finally got to do it. And um and and honestly, I think maybe even um because we had more time, we were able to do more, like mm -hmm. just from like, you know, the big Odin banner, like um came about much later in in uh in the development process of, of it. so like it, I, it was totally worth it and just and just honestly i think it just gave people more time to work on stuff it gave um and you know I, it, it was absolutely worth it yeah I, it was amazing seeing how many people showed up for our first year out uh for a painting competition um and it, uh, we had hank got a 
uh, worked with us and we got like some amazing cases there in our booth mm -hmm. and just beautiful. And just, we were able to fill them up with some really, really beautiful pieces of pieces of, of, of art. So absolutely worth it. I'm totally looking forward to the next worthy as you know, cause I think, you know, it's just, we, we kind of showed a level, right. And I, I, mm -hmm. I know we're going to get to kind of this stuff. Um, we we kind of showed a level of what the worthy is about. And I think people got a taste for like the, aspirational and also just educational like the personal i know we're going to get to this about like yeah, your yeah, yeah. personal journey uh but like i think people got a taste for it and i think that that was the part that i think that was the that was the important part of our first year is is people just getting that taste of what we're trying to do different and what we're trying to bring to um the the miniature art and the miniature hobby uh side of the major hobby game mm -hmm. so, totally worth it totally, totally awesome super. and i'm curious because i never i didn't know if there was ever like an official number of how many entries uh, you guys had for the worthy so you asked me a number and this is why this is why i'm not in development because i'm <laughs> i'm bad with numbers I'm like the worst with numbers you know uh, i'm definitely uh you know everything is a 50 50 chance because it either happens or it doesn't mm -hmm. you know uh such a determinist i am um yeah I, I it's like 130 i think that's awesome yeah uh man i can't i can't remember exactly the numbers i'm real like i said those a number goes in my head and it immediately flitters out but i remember a color combination i saw 15 years ago on the side of a building and i'm just like oh yeah and the way this <laughs> pink interacted with this you know chartreuse made this interesting comment like uh, you know whatever yeah but kind of gives you an idea of the the scope and stuff at least uh and that's awesome i had uh, no idea that that many were able to uh, to enter and participate which is really cool yeah i mean i mean that's i mean it's it's you know honestly it's like the equivalent to like um it's it's closely equivalent to the number of people playing in the big tournaments right it's yeah like, um it's 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 um the hobby is such a vital and like part of what we do. And, you know, most of your time, you know, you do a hobby miniatures game, you, you're, you're making a choice. You're, you're, you're choosing to engage with a very particular uh, type of hobby, mm -hmm. right. That has uh, these, these aspects that other hobbies don't have, right. Like, you know, I play video games, but uh, video games don't have that same, you know, uh um sit down and spend five hours painting a character mm -hmm. unique to myself and unique to my vision and something I can show my friends. It's just it's just it's just a different thing that just occupies a different mind space and it's so it's so creative and yet so personal, but yet, as I said earlier, it's so communal as well. And it should be communal. It should be shared. It should be um you should paint with people. Absolutely. I think um, it's such a healthy activity, but it's, it's such a, I don't even remember where I was going with this, Nate. Uh, but the, the, just between the different hobby, hobbies uh, yeah. that are out there, there, there's definitely a time investment into it's a miniatures. Time investment, yeah. And hobby it's, compared it's important to, some to of celebrate these that. It's mm -hmm. important to celebrate that and celebrate where you're at with it because you're choosing to engage with that, with the hobby I want to celebrate that along with you and, and help people cultivate and go in the path in the direction. I'm going to use the word path a whole lot um, <laughs> and help you in your path to get to where you want to be. And not everybody wants to be number one, you know, not everybody wants to be the, the best painter in the world and, and not everybody should shoot for that. Um, I, I, I certainly do not shoot to be the best major painter in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I would never, 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 that does not appeal to me. I want to be the best miniature painter I can be and do my job. Uh, so I'm always learning stuff, but I'm choosing my path. And I think that that's such an interesting part of what we do as a hobby miniatures game. That is, you know, it's not a board game where you just, you buy the, the, buy the box, you open it up, you take it out, you play the game, you put it back in the box, you put it away. This is like, you take it out, you put, you take it out of the box, you put it all over your desk, you put some more all over your desk, you paint the one, you got five others. Oh my God, there's 20 others. How the heck did I get 50 in this case over here? Like what's going on? And then 
and then you share it like that's the fun part yeah. is like I, back in the 90s i'd go to this uh little i'd go to this little game store and i'd walk in there was a there was a desk jockey there uh super sweet guy uh and he was always the one to push me and i'd walk in and he'd be like i'd be like i'd be like he'd be like hey dallas check this out and he'd pull out something and he'd be like i'd be like oh oh look at that and he'd be like yeah i painted it like this i'd be like holy cow man how'd you do that he's like like this is... and then i'd walk out of the game store i'd be like man i gotta outdo that and i'd go home and then i'd paint <laughs> and i'd come back to the game store i'd be like hey buddy what's up he's like what's up and i'd be like check this out he's like oh and i'm like yeah yeah what do you think of that and just a little friendly arms race right like pushing yeah. each other like pushing each other to success because we should all be celebrating each other's wins 100 percent, absolutely and uh yeah even uh we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it later but even the piece that i have uh, submitted at being able to take it around at the uh the game stores and stuff and being able to be like hey look look what i did uh and, yeah. and getting people like oh snap that looks awesome and you did this and that and so being able to kind of excite one another about it too is a, a really cool aspect of this hobby yeah it's an in- inspirational aspirational educational it's those those things like coming together in a beautiful soup, right? That mm-hmm. jambalaya. Um, for some of us, prefer jambalaya over soup, you know. But we can't get into that. That's too that's too deep of a topic. It's a whole other thing. It's a whole other thing. Don't get me started on what's a soup, what's a salad, and what's a sandwich. Um, oh man, you need to you need to get in our Discord. Like jokes aside, we have debates like what is a sandwich? Is a taco a sandwich? Is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, I mean, so first off, I'm a firm. I, I'll keep this very short. Kingdom phylum class order family genus species. All right, the kingdom is food. To me, the phylum is sandwich, soup, salad, and then things break down underneath that. Mm-hmm. So the real question comes down to: Is ravioli a class, or is taco the class? Because I'm not. I'm not. I can't quite decide. Like who who falls genetically in the sphere above one another Mm -hmm. that's awesome i don't know and pop tarts are raviolis 100 we all know this (laughs) unquestionably i mean what else could they be yeah literally it's a ravioli a literal a a desserty ravioli I mean, I can make you a desserty ravioli in a more traditional way. I can roll out some noodles. I could take some cream cheese, some beautiful like uh, mixed berry uh, kind of uh, compote, uh, put it inside the cream cheese mix. Maybe there's a, and then we like uh, seal it up. We quick boil them one and a half minutes max. And then we make a wonderful like glaze sauce that's, um, you know, maybe like some sugar mm-hmm. and a little like jam, but we want to keep it pretty light. And then we top with like a, like a, like a little bit of Chantilly okay, and then a sprinkle of mint. Like. Sounds fantastic. Finish with a little finishing salt on top. We're done. We got dessert raviolis or dumplings. One of the two. I guess it depends on how you decide to end up doing the packaging, but regardless, there's uh, there's that. Back to the action. (laughs) Uh, So, what was your favorite part of the uh, the competition that weekend? And and originally, when I had this question in mind, I was thinking like, oh man, did he like? Did he love getting to meet the people, putting their entries in? Did you? And then I was just like, oh wait, you didn't even like want to look at the entries until it came time to judging. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that there's a very important part of, the, I think for me, and, and you know, every judge is different and every competition is different. For me, I I want to judge as blind as possible. Um, the worthy was judged blind. Um, we could get to, we get to Jonathan just kicking butt. Like I, we literally had no idea. It was amazing. Like um, uh, we picked the we picked the three uh, category winners and. Uh, and then we all walked away and we did the good job. High five. We did it. And then somebody else came over, uh, Tony, Tony Konchak, who you met. Mm-hmm. Uh, he walks over. He's like, he like does the like, he like leans. He's like, ah, I just want you to know that it was one person. When, if, is that okay? Like, is, did you know that? And I'm like, wait, what do you mean? Like, are you sure I, we need to go back to the paperwork? Like, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, Oh no, like that's, that's legit. Um, yeah, 
even though like when I, like you saw me, I stood at that little kiosk mm -hmm. and I stood at that kiosk literally from open to close. Um, I, uh, except for the couple of times I did walk around and take a look at stuff. Um, I had to go buy some fancy dice for, uh, for, for my role playing games. Um, because I get made fun of because I have the ugliest set of dice in the whole wide world. You should ask my gaming group. They think they're the ugliest set of dice in the whole wide world. So I finally broke down after all these years and bought some fancy dice. Anyways, I digress. Um, I pretty much stood at that little kiosk uh, and took entries and just chatted with people the whole weekend. And just seeing uh, the, the diverse and range of people uh, come up who were excited to be a part of the worthy and decided to submit to the worthy and is excited to share mm -hmm. what they've been working on. Right. That's the big part, right? That's why we call the patch to heroic. Cause it takes a certain level of, it takes a certain level of heroicness to step up and be like, I'm, I'm ready for you to judge because I'll never judge your measure on the tabletop. If you painted your measure from tabletop, you've aced it because you had mm -hmm. fun and you did it for the tabletop. Uh, but once you step up and you say, I want this judged, you're, you're, you're asking, you're asking for something and you're asking for something big and important. Mm -hmm. um, but just being able to chat with everybody and just talk philosophy about different stuff. Like, you know, people, people pulled out things that weren't their, their entries, but like just their tabletop stuff. And people like asked me about like, well, I was trying this object source lighting and I didn't understand it. Like, can you, and I kind of broke it down. Elizabeth Beckley, um, wonderful wonderful uh painter uh has been in the industry doing stuff for a long long time uh just fabulous to hang out with she hung out with me at the booth uh she was one of our judges as well she was giving people advice like that that's the part that i love um at at, at the base core of myself i i just want to educate people on painting miniatures and building miniatures in the hobby like that is that is my if i could just give everybody something right mm -hmm. it, it would just be that like i would just i would just give you all my information just it just automatic download into into your brain just just here take all of my information go forth and conquer um because that's what i that's the part i love the most is 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 just helping and assisting and uh people on their path right so so that was my favorite part is just seeing all the people come up and just just being truly cordial and enthusiastic and um excited to just uh you know push themselves and and show what they've been working on yeah yeah absolutely uh so this one's going to get a little bit into like the the nitty-gritty of it uh can you kind of share uh, the idea behind what you were looking for at the different levels of painting, because with the worthy, mm -hmm. uh, like not, it's not just like a first, second, third kind of a thing. If yeah. you were deemed worthy of a, a bronze uh, placement medal, uh, you get a bronze kind of a thing, which is one of the things I love about the worthy and how that works. Uh, so I guess with that in mind, uh, what are the parameters of a bronze versus a silver versus a gold? If that's something you can share. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, also, uh, favorite, I forgot about this until just now you were talking about it. Like also one of my favorite things that happened, some random uh, dude just walked by my kiosk and he's like, Dallas, I just won my first game. I have no idea who that person was. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he just walked by and was like, I just won my first game. And he just walked away and I was just like, Right, like right on. Like I, I have no idea what's right on. Like good job, uh, <laughs> that was amazing. Okay, so the worthy is an <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the worthy is an open format judging system. So that means at the very first level of the competition, you're not competing against anybody else. You're only competing against yourself, and hopefully with what you did last year. Um, so, um. You, you enter in your category and everybody who deserves a bronze will get a bronze. Everybody who deserves a silver gets a silver. Everybody who deserves a gold gets a gold. Um, it's not until after that where we take all the golds and we judge those against each other where you actually start being judged against somebody else. Right? Mm -hmm. um, where we start picking who did the best in the category. 
Um, and I think that is very important. Like you said, that's it's good for your growth. It's good for your journey, right? I've had people in the past just be like, all I care about is a silver. If I could just make it a silver, I would be the happiest person in the world. And they haven't they haven't even got a bronze yet, right? Like, yeah. Um, or maybe they have a bronze and they're just like, I just want to break silver. I've tried and I just can't break into silver. How do I do it? What are we looking for? That is a little like asking how long is a string? Um, we don't do the like clipboard giving points. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is it perfect blended? Check. Because those um those um uh those check marks don't always don't always pertain to the piece that you're trying to tell um there's some there's some gold level stuff that's not perfect blended mm -hmm. um right it, it's 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 how you execute and how you present your story and if you can do it with technical authority and I'm, I guess I don't really like the word authority, technical uh, acuity, like, okay. so whatever, whatever technique you want to use. So it doesn't have to be perfect blended um, all over top to bottom. Like I actually, I prefer like some areas to be less perfect blended. And mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a person who loves tight blends personally. Like I love a good smooth blend. Yeah. Um, if, if I can make you, if I can make you go, what airbrush did you use? And I'm like, I didn't use an airbrush at all. Um, yeah. I, I love that. Um, but it's not always appropriate. So um, what we're looking for really at bronze is I'm looking for, man, it's, this, this is, it's super complex, Nate. I love this question. Um, because I'm afraid I'm going to say something and then somebody's going to be like, actually, you said this and this fits this. And I'm like, well, it's it's a philosophical thing. So it's not you know, an actual thing. Um, I think at bronze level, what I'm looking for is intent. A, a commitment to the idea that you are not painting for the tabletop. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like you have said, this piece is not for gaming. You have said, this piece is for practice. This piece is for art. This piece is for love and joy. This piece is for sharing with people on a bigger stage, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's the first step is, is the intent of the miniature. Um, we're looking for an understanding of painting, not necessarily an understanding of light and shadow and OSL and all that stuff. Like, and, and none of that stuff even matters to get a gold. Um, I always say, I can only judge you on what you did do, not what you didn't do. Mm -hmm. So like if somebody did really poor o OSL and somebody did no OSL, the no, the poor OSL is going to get judged harsher because mm -hmm. you've, you've tried to do something without the full uh, grasp of it. And so I can only judge you on that. And I yep. look at this person, they chose not to do any OSL, but they executed everything. Their storytelling, their lighting, their paint strokes, they, they executed a higher degree of uh, technicality. That's going to get judged better. Like, mm -hmm. um, free hands the same way, right? It's like, if you do bad free hand, this bad free hand is worse than no free hand, right? Yeah. If you're not ready for freehand, please go back and practice more. Like there's nothing wrong with that. There's yeah. literally nothing wrong with that. I practice my freehand. Um, even on the top of my wet palette, I I there's like little freehand lines I practice from time to time. Uh, even when I get a new brush, the very first thing I do is I test it and how small of a line can I draw with my new brush? Mm -hmm. Every single new brush I test how small of a line I can get. Uh, so that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, and then it's varying degrees as you move up into gold, like up into gold, uh, at gold level, we're looking for, did you execute the paint job and, uh, and, and in a skillful and cohesive manner and cohesive matters. Um, we had a couple entries that were like, 
the front was painted at a higher level than the back or the character was painted at a much higher level than the base or the scenic element on the display board was just not painted hardly at all it's mm -hmm. like the once once again you've decided to put something on it you've decided you've chose as an artist you want to present something um you need to paint everything to the appropriate skill level that you have and and, and for cohesiveness um you know this is why painting a squad is much harder than painting a single mm -hmm. um you know you have, if you're choosing to put six people in and i'm choosing to put three people in i'm only i the judge is only judging three measures instead of six measures six measures has a higher rate of you messing up mm -hmm. right so it's it's all that stuff that you have to take into consideration be thoughtful of. once you get to gold level you're also looking at really now i'm looking at composition composition lines uh, how does the story tell, right? How does lighting work? Because that's what you're really looking for. Because that's that's not necessarily what I'm looking for. It's what, that's just what gold brings out in people, mm -hmm. right? You know, somebody's going to put a thousand hours in a, in a, in a display base of, you know, Ursa Major surfboarding over top of Iron Man, like while fireworks shoot off and, captain america soars on a on an eagle like he's gonna put a thousand hour he or she's gonna put a thousand hours into that and if you put 200 hours in you right yeah i'm just just they're just they're just doing more right yeah That's, no the, there's an 800 hour difference there there's an 800 hour, it's that arms race right that goes right back to the 90s with me and that guy sitting in that mm -hmm that desk jockey at the game store going, look what I just did. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same thing. Yep. Yeah, nope. Uh, one's going to have uh, the, the surfboard's going to have a, that, that like nice frothy foam on oh, the waves. Yeah. Oh, and the yeah. other one's going to be like, Hey, there, there's some nicely blended water there, but yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's, there's just going to be a difference. This is going to be a difference right at that time. And like, it's kind of the arms race that we've kind of been watching in miniatures. Like, I mean, I've been watching miniature, painting competition since 92 man um you know and the the arms race is is always something that's been growing it's 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 amazing because you know we have there's people who have been painting miniatures who are now pushing for miniatures to be recognized as as fine art there's people in the in the miniature painting who uh are doing like actual uh art installation shows um at a very small level right we're not talking yeah. about like you know they're not next to the mona lisa yet but that's what's that's that's a lot of what's happening and is we're is there's people out there really pushing and celebrating what miniature painting is and um you know we have we have captain america and we want to celebrate the miniature painting of captain america and you know yeah, Black the, the stories that you can tell with that Sure. There's so many stories you can tell. There's so many stories you can tell. It's your story to tell too. That's the beautiful part. Yeah. Uh, so obviously you mentioned Jonathan already, but he was able mm -hmm. to to walk away with all the big trophies. Congratulations to him. His stuff was uh, astounding, downright gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. Uh, were there any other uh? sculpt jobs dioramas or anything else that you would like give a shout out to of just like man this was really cool uh uh yeah there was there were several pieces that i thought were just really really cool um that you know there was a there was the um i and i will never remember what everybody got so if you're sitting out there and you're listening you're like see what i got like i don't i don't always remember um there was a juggernaut piece that was like super awesome and super well done. He like was breaking out of a wall. Mm -hmm. um, and I gave that person some critiques and immediately they were just like, Oh, Holy cow. Of course. Um, yeah. Um, that, that's, that's like some of this, uh, we should get, I, I can talk about my piece as well. Cause I can give you some insight on how that brain works. Yeah. Um, uh, 
uh, there was a fellow named Jason who had the uh, I am Iron Man Mm -hmm. uh, where he converted Iron Man down on his knees doing the finger snap uh, used Dr. Strange's head which is I think a very smart choice yeah that piece I I found really fascinating because like um, when you were away from the case when you were like 30 feet away from the case you could see that piece Mm -hmm. and and that's that's how you draw in eyes like that's how you that's how you bring people to your piece. Um, so I think that there was a, some really smart lighting and composition going on on that piece. Um, Tyson's giant display board for his Black Order, yeah, was just ridiculous. Like it, it just so it's just a it's just a cacophony of color that just almost assaults the eyes, but in a pleasing way. Mm-hmm. It's like getting hit by confetti and being handed a cake. So. <laughs> um uh I really like that piece. Uh there was yeah, there's a there was a lot of really cool pieces. Um the uh other the other Spider-Man versus Green Goblin diorama that mm-hmm. was in there with the neon lighting and stuff like that. Like that piece was pretty cool too. And uh of course the the other gold in single or in duel was the Captain America. Uh, versus Iron Man Civil War. Mm-hmm. Man, that piece that piece was painted and that piece was painted such a such a such an intense caliber. It was very well done. And I was very impressed with that piece. So right off the top of my head, those those. Yeah. And and uh, a lot of those I I know just from memory off the top you of my head. You remember exactly from... what I'm talking yeah. about, right? Like that that's the impact that I mean in all those places. Uh, not all those got gold, but they all they all definitely meddled. So there's something there, right? That mm-hmm. and, that needs to be, you know. I think I know one of those got silver, right? It's just like there was just things that need to be refined. That and th- this is where we get into the discussion. Like, um, you know, some pieces are a high silver and a low gold at the same time. And like as a judge you you kind of like look at it and you're just like this could be a high silver it could be a little gold um and then that's why we have three judges and we mm-hmm. discuss it and and we go you know there's a bit of i think this person would be better served if we went with the silver because the 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 missed execution needs to be reinforced mm-hmm. and um uh, instead of the like it's 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 you you're just you're just looking at everything and like trying to you're judging art right it's 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 all subjective yeah but we're trying to put an objective and um you know we had like i said elizabeth and ben ben comets ben comets is a very uh uh decorated uh miniature painter that guy mm-hmm. has a lot of top metals. Yeah. Um uh super great guy, super amazing painter, uh a wonderful judge. Uh and so p- you have like these years of experience judging and like discussing. So it, it even though it's subjective, we're looking at the 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 craft as well. And I think mm-hmm. craft is a very important word too to think about. I like that. Yeah. Awesome. Uh so let's go to it. Is my light intense? My light's a little intense. I'm sorry. I was painting, and I like my light right there. Yeah, you got to get it down in there while uh, while you're painting. Light light is such an important part of that. Uh, let's get into mine. Uh, obviously, we had a nice uh, discussion after mm-hmm. uh, I got to pick up my piece. I was apparently on the like the last one to get picked up, which in some ways was nice because it uh, allowed for a little bit of extra time uh, to have that conversation. Yeah. Uh, but also I'd love so that people kind of get an idea of what they could expect if they were to enter it into the worthy. Uh, if you want, or if you uh, remember well enough to kind of go back over my piece and uh, some of the comments you had and stuff, uh, imagine there's a, a giant picture of it uh, sitting next to us, but. I, yeah, I, I made a poster of it. You got it right here. Oh, thank you um i'm trying to remember i re- okay so help me out you gotta have to help me out a little bit um yeah. i i gave i get we gave feedback to almost everybody 
Um, that's the other important aspect of the worthy is um, we try to give actionable feedback and the word actionable is super important there. Um, many paying competitions will not give you feedback or it's very minimal feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. We tried, we, we uh, our goal is to always give actionable feedback. I think we gave feedback to everybody, but three people who that's awesome who just, they ran out of time or they were in a rush to get to the airplane or uh, they just picked it up at a weird moment, like between judges, like, you know, running to the bathroom or trying to eat a granola bar in the break room. Yeah. Um, you guys have to get a little bit of a break somewhere, right? Sometimes we try to always do breaks. Um, so we, we love actionable feedback because that is the most important part because there's no point in helping you on your path if we're not helping you. And the best way to do that is to give you feedback. Um, so I always like to joke, like you get two, there's two versions of your feedback. You can either get the nice Dallas or the real Dallas. Um, nice Dallas is much more like good job. Yeah. You, you, you did the thing. I appreciate you. And the real Dallas is just like turning the miniature upside down and being like, see that mold line you missed. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Um, um I remember you had a 3d. This, oh yeah. 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 Helps. Okay. So you had the 3D printed plinth, which is is not a negative. Like the 3D printed plinth is not a negative. It's it, but the the finish, like it needed to go back and be finished. Yeah, yeah. You can you can see the layer lines still. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, it was it, it was it was obviously a 3D print, which is not a compliment, kind of a thing to me. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just that level of intent, right? We yeah. go back to that word intent, like your intent here is to be judged. And I can only judge you for what you did do. And what you did do is not finish the plinth. Um, yeah. Like you can go in there, you can polish that up. Um, you know, you can get a better version of the, of the print from a higher, you know, uh, uh, level printer, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. Um, the the finish on the the paint job on the plinth was a little um flat like there wasn't as much contrast as i'd like to see like but like the 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 shadow between shadow and highlight and like adding a little color in there would have been nice as well mm -hmm. like sneaking in some blues into the silver or, or some purples into the uh, bronze um i do remember that we all really liked um um agent venom himself mm -hmm. if i remember right we we all really liked him uh i think we had a comment is all these i love these i love these moments because i'm like how, what did i say before because now i'm going <laughs> to say something now i'm going to say something completely contradictory or something completely like i didn't say before you're like why didn't you tell me that before i'd be like i i don't know um i think there was like some contrast issues between some of the elements does that sound familiar it does not, but uh, it would not surprise me either. Like, but I remember all of us really liking the blue. There was uh, tightening up some of the lines. Um, mm -hmm. You did OSL, um, but the OSL is a little on the clunky side. So I think that's just a practice thing. Yeah. And so doing it here and getting that feedback is practice. Now you just got to do it again. And, and, um, I, I like to always say, I told my kid, you never learn by winning. Mm -hmm. Um, and you got to learn to love the fail and you got to learn to love the plateau. Um, failing is how we learn. And the plateau means you're on the verge of a, of an uptick. So, um, those are important things to take into consideration when I'm giving feedback. Um, so, cause those, those kind of define how I'm giving you feedback. I'm expecting you to fail. I'm expecting you to plateau and i'm expecting you to come back and be like but what about now dallas and me being like oh snap nate um <laughs> um I, man i remember the blue you did a really good job on the white i think there was some tightening issues like just getting in there and just sharpening the lines on some stuff mm -hmm. um i think agent venom is one of those ones where like you have an all uh black costume so from a competition standpoint, he really needs that story 
because you don't have a lot of visual interest on the costume. So being able to add visual interest to the co costume, you started putting some object source lighting on the tips of his toes. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if you develop that skill and able to like get that real subtle in the shins, mm -hmm. like, so start thinking about where the explosion lies to get more color onto him. Like that's where, that's how you start taking a character like agent venom to that next level. Right. Yeah. Just thinking about that composition thinking about how to put those colors in that all black costume. Um, he's also a weird composition one because he has so much going on and you actually added more to it with the, the pumpkin bomb and the spider web. Yep. Um, the spider web was big. I remember that now. Yeah. Um, it was it just, just felt... a, a snip of the, uh, oh my goodness, the uh, shield agents. That's the, uh, the rope. Oh, agent. that's the rope, the rope to nowhere. Yep. Quote, quote. Um, it's one of my favorite measures. It just is. I, I just absolutely love that. Um, it just felt a little out of scale. Right. So once again, this is intent, right? Mm -hmm. Like you want, I love that you want agent venom to shoot webs now figure out how to do it in a way and execute it in a way that feels more natural Yeah. and intentful. Um, I think the story here is pretty good right i know what's happening age of venom's leaped over the thing a pumpkin bonds go off he's grabbed another pumpkin bomb he's shooting spider webs um so i just want to see a little more tightening a little more diverse color in the plinth uh mm -hmm. in the rocks the rocks are just gray like you want to add browns to those rocks you want to add uh some uh just some tonage here and there and just just a little more storytelling and uh, like if you were to put the explosion like up on the top of the uh uh maybe this anything i say is like off the cuff and like not necessarily this is how you make yeah this yeah one. yeah it's like just me riffing on like what a composition could be and then you have to take that and like yeah but dal said this but what it really means is you got to do this like yeah. if that explosion was more up on the top of the pylon, mm -hmm. the, st the statuary. So the cast light was more across his whole form. Okay. So you, yeah, had, yeah. So you had a sharp uh, orange. I think the yellow is too bright on the on your OSL. Okay. The the that that yellow is the center of the explosion color, and the center of explosion color shouldn't be on his toes. It should be more the orange tones. You get that the orangier redder tones. Yeah, the, the orangey OSL redder kind tones. Of stuff. So if you throw that explosion on top and then you create that silhouette against his profile, that's what's going to give you some tone on that costume and give you some visual interest and really show off painting, right? Because you, you, you kind of want to show off. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that you you said just now and back then was like, yeah, like throw some greens and browns on the uh, the the rock and the uh, pylon and stuff like that and it's just like oh that's just one of those obvious things that I've heard so many times and just completely whiffed on that would be so easy to go back and do kind of a thing and I mean I mean honestly that's all of us do that I mean yeah um, you know I got you know I, I know a lot of people that paint at only competition level like like you know um, a good friend Chris Surrey and you know he still sends me whips and I'm like dude what about this he's like ah like every time, like it's, <laughs> it's you, you get, you get tunnel vision, you get lost in the process, you get kind of wrapped up and you get, you get forced for the trees syndrome, right? You just, mm -hmm. you're so in the weeds on this thing and you're just thinking about, and then you overthink it and then you doubt yourself and then you forget to think about it. Um, you know, my worthy, uh, I call it the faux worthy um, piece. You know, I, I shared that with, um, you know, a very limited group of people and it was just like, what am I doing? What, what, what are you seeing? And they're like, well, you need to, why did you not put the color there? Ah, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. The contrast color to, you know, um, I'm a big fan of when I'm painting black, like, you know, like something like Agent Venom, mm -hmm. uh, you got the blue in there, but you can also sneak a little purple in there. Um, you know, get a little red, sneak it in there because it just makes the black more chromatic and more visually interest, yeah. interesting for the eye. Um, because like you know something like something like uh, 
those all black costumes are are a little tricky to like just show off on to some extent right yeah to, for to, sure to make it interesting you just, it's just a black it's a solid black of black and white yeah no he's uh he's he's not an easy one to to elevate i guess if if maybe that's a yeah you just gotta yeah think about how am i going to elevate it and i think if you started in a space right and like this is one of those ones you could take and just iterate on like you know mm-hmm. every year just be like okay you take the same story and you just think about it in a new composition like how do i elevate the composition how do i paint the how do i elevate the paint job and just keep refining that idea um you know it, all art is iterative you know mm-hmm. from the the poses we we do for our miniatures the poses we do for the card art to the card art itself it's all iterative the rules of the miniatures it's all iterative it's yep. never the I can't say it's never the first one. There's a couple of them that are just like, that's the one, one and done, <laughs> we're out the door. Yeah. Um, um, it's, but iterating on it is, would be, and I know that I, I my understanding is he's like one of your favorite characters, right? AJ yeah, he, he's, he's definitely up there. Number one, probably. Yeah. Like, that could be a cool <laughs> thing for you to do is just like, all right, what would I do now? If I take the same idea and just iterate on it and how do I elevate, make it better? Mm-hmm. And just see if you can be, make the most extreme, extreme, uh, most elevated version of Agent Venom you can make. Yeah, absolutely. I I would watch that journey. Yeah, uh, you might have to. <laughs> you're you're making me now. Yep. I'll see it at Depticon 2024. It's a coming. <laughs> Uh, and and I do have quite a few ideas that I'm excited to to put together for this. Also, as a just completely separate note, it, after uh, going through it, getting some of the critiques, because uh, one of the things that we talked about is like at the end of the day, uh, I enjoy the hobby aspect, but I love the game aspect of yeah. this. I'm a, I'm a little bit more of a gamer. Nothing wrong with that. No, nope, nothing wrong uh, with that. Uh, but I do want to elevate what my painting capabilities are. I want to push that. I want to see where I can get to kind of a thing. Uh, and so like, don't, don't be afraid to go and do that, I guess. Oh yeah. Don't be afraid to do that. I mean, like, I mean, it goes back to what we were saying earlier. Like, I mean, you, you may lean more to the gamer side, but you, you have, you, you have taken the responsibility and the, uh, uh, what's I don't I don't know the word I'm you you have said this is a hobby measures game and I'm going to participate in the hobby as well mm-hmm. because it's 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 part of it like it's 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 just part of it it's we set out to make a hobby measures game why are the miniatures in so many parts because that's the part of the hobby yeah it's with that's that's a feature not a bug um mm-hmm. like I said we can make one we can make one piece miniatures you won't like what they look like trust me Trust me, I've seen it. Yep. We put it, we put it through the machine and said, "Look at that! It's it's real funky." Um, <laughs> or the real what we call back in the day, they used to uh, the the it was called starfish poses. Like way way back, miniatures were just like if you go back and look at old miniatures, okay. they're all on they're all on one single. Oh, plate, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right? And and it's always like. I, like the hands are the same plane as the legs and the legs are just slightly spread apart and, and the head is almost always facing almost forward because mm-hmm. it can't go too far to they, they have to be forward or all the way to the side because of yep. casting to be able to get the uh, cast yeah that's a starfish like uh, we can make starfish that's fine just it's not fun you won't get agent venom no you will you will not get agent venom out of that uh cool so the worthy in concept uh, mm-hmm. now that we've uh, gone back, nitpicked at mine a little bit, which uh, it's a welcome uh, reminder for me as well. Uh, what makes the worthy unique to the other painting competitions? Oh, uh, I don't, I'm, I mean, I mean, I think, I think all painting competitions have their place and celebrate their celebrate stuff in different ways. Um, what we're trying to do is is celebrate the the Marvel Crisis Protocol mm-hmm. world and uh, try to, like I said, help you on your path. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, give away a really badass Odin. Like, I think it's just, massive, by the way. It's massive. Oh my like, gosh! It's, 
thing is massive. Um, also, we will ship it if you win it and you don't have, and you're just like, I don't have an extra seat on the airplane. Sorry. Yeah. We we will ship it if you win it. Um, it's a it's it's a celebration of the hobby, the time that you put into it, and and just your path that you want to go on and you know hopefully hopefully we can take that path with everybody and you know uh sherpa you along mm -hmm. I, I love being a sherpa um that's my favorite thing to do when people come visit seattle is i will give you the tour i give people the tour of seattle and take you to all the wonderful places to eat including this place that has wonderful sipping chocolate oh it's delicious it's just liquid chocolate in this tiny cup you put cayenne pepper in it you sip on it oh it's amazing sounds fantastic oh it's fantastic it's just so good um but like i love sharpening people along and um and so hopefully everybody wants to come along and and try it out like um, yeah you know uh, it's like i said it's not against each other at the beginning those first levels is you're against yourself and what you've done before because i really mm -hmm. believe you should only judge yourself against others um especially if you're paying for paying for your tabletop you should never look at other people's work yeah. and be like well mine's not as good as yours Sometimes that's just true, but yeah. you had fun because it's a hobby and you engaged in it. I'm not swimming laps like Michael Phelps. That's just not something yeah. I need to judge myself against. Yeah, I'm not Mark McGuire. Mm -hmm. like, that's how bad. That's how far back my sports references go. No, back to '92. One. Back to '92. Cardinals. The card. Yeah, that's it. I'm from. I'm from that area, so I can just say Cardinals. It's just. You know, <laughs> Uh, so with that in that case, who would you encourage to put in a piece at the next worthy? Um, I mean, honestly, I think anybody just wants to improve, or anybody thinks they got the chops to beat Jonathan. <laughs> I mean, just I mean, there, there's but, a really low bar you just set, and then a really <laughs> high bar that you just decided to come out with. Yeah, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a creature of extremes. Um. I mean, just, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about your journey and celebration of art. So I, I think anybody, any, anybody, like whatever, whatever your goal is, come up, tell me your goal. Let's talk about how to make it happen. Mm -hmm. That That's what I say. Cool. Uh, and then for anybody who is looking to enter, when is the next worthy? The Depticon 2024. As far as I know. Cool. Awesome. I didn't know if uh, it was something that had, was going to be branched out at all or is adepticon kind of the the home of the worthy um currently currently adepticon uh 20 currently adept we may do we may do them another time we mm -hmm. uh, it's um you know nothing is ever set in stone right like you you never know if something is right um or when the time is right for something but right now the the next one is adepticon 2024 awesome uh I mean, well, unless they want to send me to, unless they want to send me to, I don't know. Well, UK Games Expo is already done, isn't it? So, yeah, maybe, maybe get that on the the docket for next year though, or something. Yeah, you got a year, you got plenty of time. Yeah, plenty of time, plenty of time. Uh, so one thing I'm always curious about because, as you mentioned, uh, I think before we actually started recording, like you guys are fans of Star Wars, of the Marvel, uh, oh, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So what is a comic arc that you've really enjoyed recently, whether it be new or old, that you would recommend to anybody uh, listening right now? Yeah. Uh, um, so I'm I'm actually behind on my reading. Um, fully admit. Um, um, I just went back and was uh, trying to catch up on the uh, the uh, Hellfire Gala stuff mm -hmm. that happened. Um Josh was just like geeking out about the costumes and that. And I was just like, so I just started geeking out as well. Cause like the costumes yeah. are just amazing in that. So um, I'm a little behind uh, there. Um, what I did recently picked up was the uh, 1980s Marvel comics, the entire run of Crystar, the crystal warrior. And um, I'm, I'm reading through those and just, I don't know if I'm recommending that. I'm just saying what I'm reading. <laughs> this, this is what you've been reading recently. <laughs> uh, Fair enough. We've all uh, we've all got our vices and and whatnot. Where it's just kind of like, oh yeah, I watched that too. But yeah, you know, I I I love weird stuff. And uh, I mean, I also recently picked up the first appearance of Modok. Oh wow! Um, and and read through that, and like, this is like. It's got this peak weird 
weird comics. Like I just, I think Modoc is peak comic design, one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. That is peak comic book design, right? Him and uh, characters like uh, Arnim Zola and stuff like that, where yeah. they just exaggerate and yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it look every genre has characters designed like wolverine right like Mm -hmm. like oh look muscly dude that's you know really tough and brawly like but not every genre has a modok like this is what comics allow the yeah the the insanity and these these are this is coming from a place of love just the the full embrace of imagination and just letting go and just being a fantastical story of just just ridiculousness i mm-hmm. think is just so that's the part of comics that's just so awesome the, the i mean i'm a i'm a big came through the 90s at just that right time in, in my age right like um high schooler um and in the edge of the 90s like got war thin right i'm mm-hmm. Not everything has to be edgy. Uh, some things could just be like just just crazy. Like I, like, Gwenpool, I think is one of the best things in comics. Like just mm-hmm. just very smart like way to like look at comics again. Um, yeah, in a different manner. And uh, and I think Modoc is just peak comic design. Just like that's somebody going. I can draw whatever I want. <laughs> And y- I mean, yes. you're not wrong. Yes, you could draw whatever you want. Thank you. Thank you for drawing Modoc. Yeah, no, uh, man, Modoc has been such a a fun piece, whether that's in the the shows and the, even in the movies now and stuff that has been able to be really cool to to see, uh, I guess, expand what the, the, that comic medium can be, especially from first appearance stuff when things were just extra crazy back then i feel like yeah extra crazy and i mean i played through the avengers video game and like modok shows up and like you get to watch you know george charlton like become modok in that video game spoilers mm-hmm. um five years ago yeah um, like uh it's like that's the stuff in comics is so fun to explore as well right you know i mean i love i love peter parker i love spider-man i love i love the re- relatability of of spider-man and like sometimes his his villains are just that same level of insanity and you're just like yes thank you like thank you for reminding me like and then tell me the but then also i want the story as well like you know i you know x-men we we all know why the x-men was written Mm -hmm. we all understand that um i I guess there's some people out there in the world that still need that explained to them and just whatever um but it's 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 that level of just embracing the fun sometimes and just it's it's magical spider yeah. legs modok oh my god shit put it on the schedule my lord <laughs> awesome well uh thank you so much for uh spending so much of your day uh just talking about uh something we all enjoy and love and stuff man it's been uh, great to have here. you on for it yeah that's why we're here nate we're out here for out of, out of joy and love embracing the ridiculousness and the the beauty and um the fun of the game and the art of the miniatures like that's that's what it's all about and we're just here to share it and be part of it with you so i i thank you for having me on and let me uh soapbox and ramble on like i do oh always anytime and we'll uh we'll try to get you back for that uh miniatures uh process uh talk to uh the, anybody watches our streams knows like if somebody asks one question, all it takes is one question in the chat. Just like, just one time, why Star Lord Star Lord ten four parts? I'm like, well, I will explain it to you. And <laughs> I'm not being mean. I'm not being condescending. I'm being educational, but I can literally explain it to you. It's a it's a fascinating process. Making miniatures is a fascinating process. Um, um, and and philosophically, from a studio standpoint, we're always we are always going to push. We're always going to mm-hmm. go you know we're artists we're creatives we want to we want to go above and beyond and see what else we can do so it's 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 a it's a neat it's a neat process and i love the hobby and i love that you and your uh your community and your uh watchers enjoy it too yeah absolutely 
I will say, I feel like uh, all of the AMG staff would be like favorite high school teachers because they'd be so easy to just derail off topic with oh, yeah. uh, a couple of well-placed questions. Oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the only way I could be a teacher is like an elementary art teacher. Like that would be my speed. This is like, yeah. let's, we're gluing macaroni today, kids. Like get out the construction <laughs> paper. Johnny, quit eating the paste, right? Like, Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, for those uh, watching, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. And until next time, keep on gaming and keep on painting. Yeah, keep on gaming. <laughs>